that when it rains, I get wet. <laughs> <laughs> but you're a Zen guy, you already knew that. <laughs> yeah. I, th I think the, the thing that frightens me more than anything else is the problem of women and children is invisible. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody gets it. Mm -hmm. And nobody, you know, when I have a social worker or a psychiatrist or a therapist in my audience, they understand exactly what I'm saying. But when you pull a kid from the mother, you know, I say, especially when it's less than three years old, you know, the kid goes into a survival mode. That means he's not trusting, mm -hmm. he's not learning, speech de development is retarded. And by the time they hit puberty, they have got some real aggression problems. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they just don't get it. And yeah. Next generation of clients for the system. That's right. And, and that's 70%. 70% of the kids that have a mother in jail or prison end up going to prison. That's the best statistical base that I've ever seen on that. Wow. And, you know, it's like, that's scary. And, but worse, I don't know that it's worse, but equally as bad is when a mother, especially a young mother, has a baby in jail or prison. They pull the baby out at like 30 minutes to 60 minutes, something like that. And then the mother, especially if it's her first time, has never had the experience, the bonding experience. And, it, and for a human being, it takes about three weeks for that to fully establish. So she has got this, she's got these uh, chemicals, serotonin, dopamine, and oxytocin running through her. And it's supposed to complement and build certain processes, biological processes, and they ain't paying back. Mm -hmm. You know, and so what happens is intellectually, she knows she's a mother. Physically, biologically, there's no motherly reinforcement, validation mm -hmm. of that. And the ones I know, especially the teenagers, they're, that disconnect is big, and mm -hmm. that disconnect I can see getting medicated, you know, with drugs and alcohol when they get out. Either, either it's going to get medicated that way, or they're going to have another kid right away, mm -hmm. because there's there's a process that's uh, there's a, a sure. very mm -hmm. DNA level process that's not being fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And New York State, I think it's in uh, I can't remember the name of the prison, the women's prison there. Uh, did you ever see that DVD that Eve Ensler did on what I want my words to mean to you? I think so, but it, you're talking about Bedford Hills. Yes, Bedford yeah. Hills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they've got a kids program there that's been in existence over a hundred years. Mm -hmm. And their recidivism rate for the women that complete that program is 10% or less. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So they keep the mothers and the children together. That's right. Mm -hmm. And there's, I think, and I'm not sure, I think there's six prisons in the United States, six out of 50, that have programs that are either started or they're working on or something or another where they keep kids and the mother together for a year. Mm -hmm. But the, the mother is a pretty low-grade offender. Mm -hmm. But then again, what, three-fourths of the women in prison are in for nonviolent charges? Mm -hmm. And it's mostly addiction and uh, drug-related charges. Yeah, and then when they come out, they have very little access to social programs or housing because they're classified as addicts or drug offenders. That's right. And it rules them out of almost all the uh, social support programs. Uh, one of the things I've been able to do, and I'm I probably going to shoot myself in the foot doing it, is that nobody comes to my center unless they agree to go to college. Mm. And I've had pretty good luck with that. I've got about, not in my center, but I've got about 12 or 15 of them in college right now, wow. and maybe three three have graduated, mm. and oh, they've done really well, you know, I mean, I'd like to show you that, give you a speed thing of that, what I talk about, mm -hmm. because my sense is that, and I don't know how sure I am of this, but if, when someone comes out of prison, if you get them involved in something bigger than they are, mm -hmm. you know, like college, mm -hmm. You know, where, where they really have to work and, and it's a long-term thing and you put them in a structured environment that's pretty safe, mm -hmm. they will run. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's, 
Yeah, people are basically just trying to get their needs met, you know. And if you give them the opportunity to get their basic needs met in um, in an easier, not necessarily easier, but I mean a way that feels better and saner and has greater possibilities, most people will go for it. They will, but you know something, there's an incredible transition that I'm, I'm finding because they come in with this baggage, especially mm -hmm. youthful offenders. And, I mean, they've got some real weird baggage. Mm -hmm. And what happens is you put them in a structured environment and for about the first 30 to 60 days, they do just great. Mm -hmm. And then this old junk starts surfacing. Mm -hmm. And it starts surfacing because they're in a safe place. Mm -hmm. And now they want to pull up, you know, s you know, little pieces of this and make that work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a, well, why can't we have meat, you know, or, you know. And, and so you really get it. And, and I know it's happening. It's safe, so they want to mm -hmm. they want to either process it or something like that. And when you're, you know, when I'm the authority figure, you know, and, and they've told me this, they, they see their father's face come up or, mm -hmm. you know, someone that beat the living daylight out of them come up and it's like that face appears on you. Mm -hmm. And boy, there's some visceral hatred that comes up. And, you know, it's, it's really weird, but yeah, part of the game. The part that scares me is I've got four. I've got four youthful offenders that are under 21 and have a baby that's under three or four years old. They want to come to my place, 2014. And I ain't got a bed for them. Mm. You know, and you know, the place that they got to go back to is, is not good. And uh, I'm not responsible for them, but I just hate to see, you know, the kid and yeah. the, and the child, you know, the woman, go go back to what they were. I've had friends, uh, colleagues who've done a lot of work um, with female offenders and in post release, and they found it very frustrating because they find that. Um, in post-release, a huge percentage of the women just disappear. They just disappear back into some relationship. They find some guy, they hook up, and they're just, they're just gone. This is where 